Aloha and welcome to Cooper Union, what's happening with human rights around the world on Think Tech Live, broadcasting from our downtown studio in Honolulu, Hawaii and Moana Nui Akea. I'm your host, Joshua Cooper, and the title of today's episode is Unique Undertakings for Rights in Ukraine, Innovative Individual Initiatives and International Law Institutions. I'm so excited today to be having Maharita Tarasova from the project coordinator from the Ukrainian Helsinki Human Rights Union joining me today. Maharita, thank you for appearing and sharing information from what's happening on the ground. Thank you for inviting me. Today, we're entering the 27th day of the Russian invasion, but the United Ukrainian resistance is defying all odds. Can you share with us some of your observations on the ground of what's happening today? Uh, yeah, of course. Unfortunately, uh, Russia is doing what it normally does with conflict which uh, it is involved. In, like uh, uh, they can't seize cities like big cities like Kharkiv, Kiev, and others. So actually, they didn't seize any single city except for Kherson. It's in the southern part of Ukraine. So what they try to do right now is actually terrorize uh, population. They shell heavily uh, peaceful cities like Mariupol, Kharkiv, and and other cities, uh, they tried to organize some sort of occupation power on the occupied cities. But the thing is that uh, people don't want to, you know, to live in Russia. They resist. Uh, we have constant demonstration in, in Kherson, Berdyansk, in, in Melitopol cities. They're, they're all cities on the southern part near Crimea that were occupied relatively quickly on like first week uh, of the war. And they constantly protest. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Russian troops use violence. And again, them we uh, have uh, uh, Almost 400 people are reported to be arrested by uh, Russian troops, and uh, there were also shooting yesterday. So they open fire on on people, and people don't stop. They keep protesting. They they just hide. For example, if something like this starts, but then come back. They uh, they prevent to you know like when, when Russia tries to uh, put Russian flag on our administration, so people just uh, just uh, uh, don't don't agree. They they remove it and then place a Ukrainian flag. So uh, uh, so yes, and I you probably heard about Mariupol. It's the most devastating situation right now there. So uh, the city is encircled, and Russia doesn't allow humanitarian uh, convoys there. They uh, they don't allow uh, people to evacuate, they don't allow anything, so people are run out, uh, running out of food, of water, of everything, so they don't have electricity, they don't have connection people, their relatives, they don't know uh, what the, you know, like, what, what's going on there, so they don't have connection with uh, with people, people are constantly on, on uh, bomb shelters, they give birth there, they uh, feed their children there, they, they died there, so people can't be even buried normally, I mean, people just, you know, like, they buried on the, uh, like, on the, in the City. I mean, like they, they just find a place where the the person can be buried, and this you know like brotherly uh, uh, funerals, let's say. So it's uh, it's it's devastating. Russia is you know like they just uh, trying to punish people so they don't you know like don't don't give up. They still resist. They can't seize the city, uh, of course, because we have uh, our army uh, that protect this city and nobody is going to, you know, like just uh, give, give up and uh, like, I don't know, to, 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 you know, to agree with some, I don't know, some, some Russian conditions. So people resist and Russia is uh, using the, the most, you know, like, um, uh, most devastating tools, the most devastating weapon to just to kill as much people as possible. So they shell, uh, they shell, you know, just buildings, residential buildings, they shell uh, hospitals, they shell everything. You might uh, probably uh, seen the, uh, this um, a theater that was used actually people took uh, shelter in this uh, in, in the basement of theater and it was the uh, the writings on the ground it says children in uh, in Russian and it was bombed uh, of, uh, luckily people like were able to I don't know we, we don't know the exact number of people who survived but a lot of them survived because the basement was good enough and they uh, hide there uh, so yeah the the situation is um, 
you know, it's, it's, it's like this, the, 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 the most of the time they, they try to advance. I mean, they, they wanted, of course, they, and they still want to have Kyiv, they still want to have Kharkiv and other big cities, but uh, the, uh, the situation is that, uh, you know, Kyiv and other cities, like there are large cities. I mean, we have like 4 million people live in Kyiv. It's, it's, it's large city. I mean, we have a large country. It's the, uh, the, the second largest in, in Europe. So, and we, have also you know like fields mountains and uh, forests and swamps and everything so it's not that easy you know it's not like you just enter the country and go so it's 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 not like that and yet they try to to seize these cities but of course they can't because we have very much experienced uh, um, our armed forces because it's been actually eight years we uh, we are at war at russia so they they underestimated of course our armed forces and our people who don't want to live in russia at all so yeah and they of course they they just punish people for for resisting no we, we we thank you for your bravery on the ground and can you share with us some of the activities that your ngo is doing during this war and how you plan on using that information and knowledge hopefully during peace soon if the negotiations are able to move forward what do ngos do and and why is it so important in the middle of such a horrible conflict. Yeah, yeah, you know, like NGOs have been very much united since the occupation of Crimea, since the invasion of Donbass. So we like have this uh, very much strong organization and activists who work uh, passionately and constantly on uh, documentation. We document everything and, and every single case will be, you know, like will be uh, documented, information will be collected. We we have witnesses, we have photos, videos and everything. So we look forward to, uh, to see Russia, you know, in, in, in every, like in, in all possible institutions. Uh, and organization of course have, uh, have developed cooperation with uh, International Criminal Court, with the European Human Rights Court and other institutions. So we have several, you know, tracks, uh, our diplomats and also human rights organization work uh, together to sue Russia in different institutions and uh, uh, you probably uh, know about the most recent uh, uh, decision of uh, uh, UN International Court of Justice that uh, warned Russia to to stop all this uh, uh, action, you know, like mi military operation and everything. Uh, so we collect everything. We also consult uh, people, victims who, for example, lost their uh, uh, like their, their houses or or the. Uh, like have relatives who got missed. Um, so we also have this part of work to help these people and it also help us to collect information about the war crimes and uh, we uh, also like launched the coalition of organization who now work together to uh, to again to document uh, crime um, war crimes cases and to uh, cooperate with um, institution the several mechanisms were like uh, introduced to to um uh, to work on Ukrainian, you know, like on 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 what's happening in Ukraine. It's, it's, of course, it's uh, uh, international criminal court who uh, that already agreed to 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 you know like to uh, to work on case of uh, in Ukraine, but also it's uh, OSCE uh, Moscow like so called Moscow mechanism to also to collect the information about the uh, human rights violation and also UN monitoring mission who is again has been working in Ukraine since 2014. So it's, you know, like it's actually a lot of work is being done right now. And uh, of course, it's not like something we you know, like we we can um, uh, like influence the, the flow of war and something. But we, of course, we, we keep all this information. We uh, document everything and Russia will 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 pay for for for, for what it's doing. No, thank you. And we know the most obvious crime is called aggression. That's invading another country, and that's what Russia has done. Uh, one of the other aspects of the ICC you shared, besides the crime of aggression, of course, are the war crimes. What are some of the most obvious cases regarding that attacking civilians and other aspects that you're building 
And what do you see that moving forward? We know it has been active and the International Criminal Court has taken action with the Libya case. They did it in three months. And now with the world united as they are and people supporting this, they think they might be able to also be able to coordinate and be able to bring this information forward. Uh, the, I know the International Criminal Court has been successful. They investigated in Uganda and the Congo, why the conflict was ongoing. They also investigated Libya in the middle of the rebellion. Do you think your information will be helpful to be able to assist the ICC in going forward, especially looking at war crimes with great breaches of international law committed during this armed conflict? Yes, yes, of course. I think it's we we, we should take every opportunity. You know, like we we have unfortunately uh, Ukraine hasn't signed Rome Statute yet. I mean, even though we have uh, war conflict, even though organization exists, we have to sign it. Some like it's it, it's been like public discussion and a lot of myths about it. So unfortunately, we're not you know like the the full member of this institution. But ICC is investigating cases, and you know like it's uh, since the the occupation of me of course they, they they've been working on ukraine but it's it was more you know like uh, this uh, conflict wasn't that you know like uh, at, the, at that scale it wasn't just like and it, everything was like you know like just working flow on an investigation then of course we were like expecting the, the some decisions and everything but everyone understood that it's it's not going to be you know like tomorrow or in one year but now i see that you know people actually and um, uh, communities of lawyers, on judges, on on human rights defenders, they see that you know, like the the response mu must be immediate. So we can't, you know, like wait. And of course, they they investigate. And uh, Russia is, you know, like using the the propaganda to say like we are we are not uh, like killing civilians. We uh, we we don't uh, you know ruin cities and everything. But the every everyone actually sees the the truth. We have probably. Uh, all, all the war crimes possible, except probably for genocide and you know the, the most severe cases. But again, we 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 are we are, we are not over yet. I mean, we, we still have war, so everything might uh, you know happen. But uh, every uh, like every uh, like every every violation you, you can imagine, like ru ruining city, killing civilians, attacking hospitals, attacking uh, humanitarian convoys, attacking volunteers, uh, take uh, civilians hostages, and uh, I don't know, shooting journalists, everything. You know, like we we like we we, we don't actually uh, we have the the uh, the group of uh, volunteers who document cases, and we have like. Does seem like it has froze, and we hope Harita is able to join us again as she's outlining the important case of what is being built up regarding the war crimes taking place today. We know that it's no easy task to build a case, and it's considered extremely difficult. We know the ICC has convicted 10 more criminals in the past two decades, but we've also seen the world join together like never before to say that war will not be tolerated. We see individuals taking action. So we do hope that the work that you're doing, Maharita, gathering the information on the ground, providing that knowledge, but more importantly, building the case will be a valuable tool. And we're so glad you're able to join us. We know we all have the spirit that we will not let anything stop us. And I'll let you continue on what you were explaining. Yeah, sorry, I was I was disconnected. Yeah, I, I mean, like we we uh, you know, like we our volunteers who document these uh, cases, they like have uh, work every day. We have like every single day we have cases to to document. It's like the uh, like you know. Russian troops kill civilians. It's the 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 you no know, like the war tool for them. So they just try to um, undermine people resistance. They try to you know show that uh, if if you are against us, you will you will be either killed or uh, or sent to prison or something. So the uh, uh, unfortunately we 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 you know like we go through this, but it it also shows the the world that uh, you know like war is like 
like that. It's not something you know like romantic. It's not something we can just uh, ignore or um, it's it's happening and it's, it's it affects everyone. So even like even if it's happened uh, uh, like in Ukraine, I mean it doesn't go to other countries. It doesn't mean they are not affected. I talked to to human rights defender to from other countries and they say like people are frightened because they say if like we we might be next if Ukraine falls we might be next and even if it doesn't I mean nothing is going to stop Russia I mean unless they have weapons they have people it's a huge country I mean it's it's really huge country they have uh, a lot of people so uh, like if 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 we don't like uh, you know like response must be you know like very much clear and it must it it, it should be like that it, it doesn't encourage other countries to invade so we have other uh, countries like china like uh, you know other, other other large countries who might have some interest on others so we might show them that if you uh, use war to you know to to protect your interest or to i know to to share your authority or something you you will be punished and this punishment must be on different levels so of course our you know like uh, military management or our diplomats they work in, on different levels to 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 take russia accountable but we also as human rights defenders you know like it's it's um it's difficult for now uh, like for us now to you know distinguish human rights from po- politics from military because it's it's all united and we see that without uh, you know like uh, strong uh, like arm armed response we can't uh, ensure people like people's rights uh without diplomacy we can't you know like we we can't do anything with uh, human rights because russia doesn't respect uh, human rights law international law at all but it doesn't mean that we 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 also don't you know like we 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 have to do the same so we respect uh, this uh, uh you know like respect these values so we we try to really you know show the difference between democracy and dictatorship and democracy must prevail i mean it doesn't mean that if you have a lot of uh, you know like uh, tanks and uh, bullets and uh, guns you 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 can you know like just say other countries what what they have to do so it's we really rely on this uh, you know international law and uh, human rights values to 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 show people that uh, it's it's powerful tool to resist but we we also have to you know like use all the possible mechanism to to take Russia accountable no it's great to see the non-governmental organizations and the people's movements uniting and coming together and using everything that's possible that exists under international law to see what is possible at the human rights council what is possible at the un general assembly if the security council is being blocked and then as you were sharing and explaining even deeper what's possible with the international criminal court and what you point out is also so important about individuals so the actions of Olga Smirnova a Bolshoi ballet ballerina saying that a line has been drawn and that we cannot remain indifferent. That's important. Uh, just this morning, the Noia Gazeta editor, Dmitry Muratov, said his award will be auctioned to raise funds for Ukrainians fleeing war. And they did also lay out the steps that must be taken. Muratov is so brave because he's one of the only journalists still organizing. He said the five things that need to be done, and I was wanting to get your opinion on that. First, stopping the combat fire two, exchanging prisoners, three, releasing the bodies of the dead and honoring their spirits, four, providing humanitarian corridors and assistance, and finally, supporting the millions of refugees who have fled. Does that sound like steps that must be taken and that you're supporting as well right now? Yeah, yeah, of course, you know, like we support all the steps that can help people, civilians and uh, uh, people who are under like on the occupied territories to survive. But uh, the, the main thing that Russia has to res- withdraw all the troops, including those troops that uh, in Crimea and Donbass, because without it, we, we, we again uh, justify the, the, you know, like justify the use of force. Because if we say like, OK, withdraw your troops to like um, to 
to the positions that, that were on uh, February 24th, they say like it's okay to invite other countries unless like uh, unless you you are losing. So like if you if you can do it successfully and quickly, we're okay with that. And unfortunately, it what uh, happened to when Crimea was occupied, so Russia like caught us in the middle of political crisis. We just uh, had a revolution, and now our president fled uh, the country, and we just started build the the democracy let's say and russia uses uh, use this uh, situation to to invade crimea and they of course they didn't uh, meet resistance because we uh, we we weren't prepared i mean and uh, unfortunately because it happened so quickly and without blood uh, the world was like Okay, like we we don't want to escalate, you know, like it's it's what they kept saying us. And uh, the first thing that you know, like the when when one country invades the other country, especially when we talk about the country with nuclear weapons. So if this country invades the country without um, any chances to you know like to protect itself, so the response must be immediate, and it's it's it must be you know the. It must be huge sanctions. It must be uh, isolation of the of the world because uh, I don't know what would happen if uh, you know, like if we uh, if, if the world had reacted uh, back then. I mean, with with huge sanctions, but everyone was you know like uh, cautious and uh, nobody wanted to to escalate. And unfortunately, after eight years, it it gave for Russia you know like uh, uh, justification to to try to try again to to occupy it. To, more territories and unfortunately it also happened to Georgia in 2008 and it, it happened to Moldova and to, like almost all the neighboring <laughs> countries so they they tried to you know like they 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 tried to uh, like to, to they, they they wanted to see if if people would react if if the if world uh, would react and unfortunately yes when we have we had like a lot of discussions about uh, what should be done and uh, less uh, was actually done and now we see the the reaction but it's uh, like it's probably uh, quite late because people are, are dying right now we can't you know like uh, we, we can't uh, um, we can't stop it right now but um, it must be you know like the the response must be immediate and uh, of course the human rights defenders and all the people who want to support the, the first demand must be the the uh, the Russia must withdraw uh, the troops and uh, start paying reparations because uh, they uh, they they caused a huge damage for for Ukraine. Of course, they they caused huge damage for for itself. I mean, the they they now suffering the 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 most severe consequences. But also, we will suffer uh, as well um, the damages the people uh, like lost and uh, cities ruined and everything. So it must be you know like I I believe without uh, without it we, we wouldn't have uh, peace i mean if russia just uh, uh, i don't know come back and uh, think about what uh, what was done and what should should be done like in other ways so it, they, they will return some 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 day so they they actually did it i mean uh, after crimea after georgia after all this so yes of course um, all, all the uh, steps that uh, people take right now matter. I mean, all the uh, support, all, all demonstration all around the globe. I mean, every letter, everything. So every humanitarian at uh, like hosting refugees, everything matter. But the, the, the first demand must be Russia must uh, withdraw uh, troops and never, never, <laughs> never try again. No, thank you so much for explaining as well. For many people, they just saw the conflict beginning 27 days ago, but it's something I was there in 2016 as well. And we knew that the invasion in Crimea also was a lesson. And we could see now that maybe the world has learned better to respond immediately and that the actions on the ground by the people, the bravery and the beauty inspire everyone else, but then also illustrates the importance of an order that's based in the rule of law, and also that make sure that every life is sacred and important so that no one can sit aside and watch. And that spirit of never again in the UN charter that created that document then mobilizes people. I know we only have a couple of minutes left, but I also agree that Marina, the television station channel one 
uh, employee was very brave as well. That editor appeared behind the nightly news anchor saying no war in English, sharing that the world is lying to you. It's also getting out, as you said, that so many Russian soldiers are also dying. But I think what you really brought up tonight and sharing with the bravery of what you're doing on a daily basis is documenting what's happening, but saying that every action that everyone takes is important, either if it's helping refugees fleeing, if it's donating funds, if it's making sure that the human rights record is established so that we can actually hold people accountable later. And you did allude to it, why it's so important what we're doing is that for other big powers considering using war as a tool, we're trying to say that war is obsolete and that should not be the way forward, that there's new ways forward that we're all demanding and coordinating going forward today. Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, you know, like uh, when we talk about the the countries, uh, especially those large ones and with with a lot of weapons, it's, it's extremely important that we have these tools to prevent these conflicts because uh, we we are very much aware that uh, uh, like smaller countries don't, don't have enough troops and don't have enough resources. And, you know, like Ukraine has given up a nuclear weapon uh, to uh, in exchange of uh, security guarantees so it was our uh, choice to to be the country without nuclear weapon and do not threaten other countries you know like with with nuclear weapon but now it's it, it might also encourage the countries who have a nuclear weapon to you know like to think twice before before giving up so we, we don't have we, 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 we shouldn't show this you know like uh, this example so we we should show that if country uh, small enough even if it's a uh, poor enough, if, if, if it's not militarized enough, uh, it still ca can be protected. So I think it's very important that we like react uh, to to this uh, uh, to, to these attempts and not not only when it happens you know like this full scale invasion but also if countries just try to you know like to uh, pretend on other countries' territories and everything. Sure. Yeah if there's bullying of anyone then no one is safe in the world. And that's why we need this rule of law and also to make sure that these standards exist. We also know today's World Water Day, and we know that's been one of the tactics that they've been surrounding cities, turning off the electricity, turning off the water and turning off the heat. Uh, what should be done and how can we help people there? Is it the, is that the heat pumps being sent? Would that be helpful in our final moments of the show? Yeah, I think we we should send the the water supplies. I mean, as much as possible. And I believe that there will be chance we could uh, deliver it because now you know, like the, the one of the tactics of Russia is to uh, attack humanitarian convoys to uh, cut people from uh, every supplement, food, water, and everything. But I believe when like we we when we have this, you know, like opportunity to provide them, our our volunteers and authorities will do everything they can. So it's important to have it stored to to have it available and people when people evacuate they of course need everything and unfortunately water is is, is also something you know like it's it's difficult to imagine in, in uh, 2022 but yes people in the center of europe can be you know like and we also have one child died in mariupol from uh, dehydration so uh, yes it's 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 something that's happening it's very important to send humanitarian aid to to um to to donate to humanitarian uh, needs and uh, we will of course try to deliver everything as possible. Thank you so much for joining us and pointing out and showing to us by your actions that every drop counts, every action matters, and that together we can create a world where international standards support and guarantee the right of self-determination and peace for all. Thank you Maharita for joining us today and we wish you well in all the work you continue doing. Thank you.
Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.